I'd like to call this meeting to order. Roll call, please. Mrs. Benteen. <coughs> Mrs. Hendrickson. Mr. Klinkner. Here. Here. Mr. Peterson. Here. Mr. Shavlik. <laughs> Here. Mrs. Valdre. Here. Mr. Williams. Here. Written notice of this meeting was sent to the news media on Friday, July 8th, 2022. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we need approval for tonight's agenda. You have a motion, please. I'll make that motion to approve tonight's agenda. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Motion carries to approve agenda. Next, we need approval of the minutes from the previous meetings, the regular school board meeting on June 13th, 2022, negotiations meeting June 20th, 2022, committee of the whole board meeting on June 27th, 2022, and negotiations meeting on June 29th, 2022. But before we do the uh, motion to approve, are there any um, discussions or changes to the minutes? Okay, can I get a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Second. All in favor of approving the list of minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion carried. Next, we'd like to recognize our invited guest, Jeff Schmidt, for the marine biology class. Come on up, Mr. Schmidt. And you have some students along that went on the trip. They all came back in one piece? All they did. Good. <laughs> uh, so the marine ecology class, um, we went to Florida. Uh, actually, before we go, uh, went to Florida, the first thing that we actually have uh, is we have a class for five days here in Two Rivers at the high school in the mornings. Uh, well, for four hours, it doesn't have to be the morning, but we did mornings uh, for four hours in which we talk about or the um, ecology, actually learn a lot of terms. Uh, we start learning fish, uh, and then we do a lot of other learning activities, which they're doing right now. And we also practice, do a practice snorkel um, here, and uh, we went to the family swim club uh, and used their pool to um, practice snorkeling this year. Uh, and that is supposed to give them a base of what they're going to end up learning or seeing when they're down there so that when they go diving in the water, they don't have to say what is that fish right away. There's a good chance they actually know what is that fish um, there. And they see a lot of the um, just the things going on or when they hear it a second time down there, they already know. So it ends up being a lot of review. Uh, then after that, so of course, the main part of the trip is actually going on it. Um, mm -hmm. So the first thing we uh, do is we visited um, the Everglades there. Uh, there we see some animals top left if you can find the alligator in there. Um, and there's a boardwalk uh, to go around on, and then the bottom left picture, which I know I can't see so well, uh, is a nice overlook to s for them to see what the Everglades uh, really is, the sea of grass and the slow-moving water. So uh, we've talked about that in the class already, so for them to actually see it now, um, there. Uh, then after that, uh, we go to Marine Lab, which is kind of a, I call it like a summer camp type place where they have everything that we need once we get there. They have a cafeteria that feeds us. They have boats that take us out. Um, everything we do, we're there for the rest of the time. Uh, and the first thing we actually do is they ha take us to their lagoon, which is where these pictures are from. And it's really a practice snorkel to uh, go around and uh, see some, just practice snorkeling, using the equipment, practice diving. But in their lagoon, they have some cool things. Like that was the only place that we saw seahorses like that, a pair of them intertwined together uh, there. And they found some other critters when they were swimming around uh, in there. 
Uh, and then this year, the weather was amazingly good, uh, so much so that the first day they took us out in the afternoon to the reef. The general uh, setup there is in the morning we have breakfast, and then at 9 o'clock we get on a boat and go snorkeling someplace. And then we come back and have lunch, and then we get on the boat again to go snorkeling. And then we come back at night and we have a lecture, or what they call a discussion, and a laboratory activity there. So on the second day, usually you go out to the, or the second trip, um, usually you're going out to the, like the seagrasses or the, um, the um, mangroves, uh, an easier place to learn to snorkel to make sure everything's good. But it, the weather was so good, they took us straight out to the reef, and it ended up being a very good trip. In fact, I think it was too good of a trip for them because they ended up seeing some of the big things like the eagle rays and the sharks uh, right away, which usually they don't, you don't get so lucky. So they saw a lot of things right away Almost took a little way away. I was worried because I said, like, we have three or four more days of trip. I hope you don't <laughs> run out of uh, things to see here. Um, and uh, just the diversity of fish that they end up seeing as we're snorkeling around. Uh, another big activity uh, I said was the lab activities. Uh, sometimes the lab activities are at nights, which you're seeing up here on the top left, they did a behavior activity. And actually the group of students they had this year is probably the best I've ever seen do that, that they actually were in to try a whole bunch of little things and they just kept on going on it. Um, so it kept the interest up. They also tried to um, make or help grow a little um, Cassiopeia or uh, jellyfish babies on there, so they got a picture of Adam holding one there. Uh, we also do some labs out on the boats, uh, which uh, we're in the plane with some different organisms there. I uh, can't see, it looks like a snail and stuff. Um, and other activity, other science things that we do besides snorkeling, uh, we do a project, that, uh, these are all citizen science projects. Uh, top left is we're looking for fish and they put that data that they got, uh, they marked how much or what species and how many they found. Um, and that's actually you two right there, isn't it? I think that is. Um, and uh, they found what kind of fish they found, and then they put that actually in a database, and uh, that I get emails every once in a while from the group that, uh, of how they've used that data and papers that they've um, used. Uh, the next picture is doing water quality, and that's put into a different database. Uh, bottom left, they're doing a phytoplankton, and they're, or zooplankton, sorry, and they're counting the number of different things we saw, and that gets put into a different database there. Um, and actually we do a couple other things that I didn't have up there where we're looking at the diversity of um, organisms and measuring it there. And the last picture where is actually our last day and our last dive where we were uh, signing for organisms and there I, we find little fish and sea horses and um, some other little things there. Now you want to add in? Sure. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, I'm Adam Polovsky. Uh, my favorite thing about this trip was like the diversity, like he had said earlier. Uh, I'm like a really travel-oriented person. I went hunting in a lot of different parts of the U.S. and I by far had to say this is my most favorite place, even though I wasn't doing anything of that sort. Just uh, it's like you swim, I don't know, 20 yards maybe, and you see more fish than you would in like all of Lake Michigan, it seems like. Mm -hmm. You want to tell them? <laughs> Uh, they also saw a manatee on the second day. I think it took to the second day that they found uh, some manatees. Uh, and they uh, saw the manatees on the next couple of days uh, to a point, I always hate this when a group gets to a point when someone says, hey, there's a manatee, and they don't even get up because they're not excited. They've seen that already, and the group got to that point where they're, okay, it's a manatee again. They've seen it so much, and of course, that's a rare sight to see. Uh, so this is actually what we usually do for one of our last dives. It's the uh, mangroves, um, or first dives, but we did it in the last. We went into the mangroves and saw the little fish and organisms, and they got to pick up a lot of the cool things uh, inside of there and actually hold, look at them, and that's actually them holding some of those things in the water and some of the other things they collected. Uh, lettuce sea slug, which seemed to be a favorite of this year, and a couple of different stars uh, in there. 
Um, another cool thing, uh, that top left uh, picture, is we went to, it's actually has been our favorite dive site for a while. It's called Hard Bottom. Uh, it's an area that's not really out at the reef yet, but it's not in that mangrove area. It's in between, and then we end up finding some lionfish, and the people that we are with, not us, but the people that we are with collected those lionfish. Uh, we found three. They were able to capture two, and very nicely, one of them... Uh, uh, cut it up, filleted it, uh, and then brought it in, cooked it up for us even too, and brought it in so they each got a little bit of lionfish to eat uh, there. Um, I gotta is, say that that lionfish actually was pretty good. I was really surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little nervous to try that, but it's pretty good. They're an invasive species in Florida, that's why they're collected? Correct, yes. So, uh, top. Oh, 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 so, you, uh, got, you got to stop and introduce yourself. Yeah. And oh, uh, my name is Aiden Porkins, and I was on the marine trip too. So, uh, bottom uh, right picture was, I think, uh, Grunts, which was one of the best spots to see him. And then the top bottom left was the picture that I took of more eel. Best picture yet, in my opinion. <laughs> Best place ever, too, because, like, I got this close, and it was just amazing. The whole trip was just an amazing place to be. Josh. Does anybody have any questions for us? Can you tell us, like, the, what it was like learning how to uh, snorkel and, like, what was the water like? Uh, okay. It was pretty warm, actually. Definitely nothing like you'd experience any time of the year around here. Uh, it's really salty, I can say that. doesn't taste very good from my experience. Um, the snorkeling, it wasn't as hard as I had expected it to be. I was kind of nervous going down there thinking I'm going to struggle, I'm not going to be able to keep up or anything like that. But it was really fun. It was quite, it, You catch on quick. It's definitely not something you realize until you're there doing it. It's pretty enjoyable. You also have to be very aware of your surroundings. And why do you say that? So, funny story. <laughs> so, there was nine people on the trip, four girls, five guys, and me, Adam, and uh, Cameron Essert. We were a trio, and we were always together because we had to have diving buddies. You weren't allowed to go off anywhere by yourself. And Cameron was not very detail-oriented and kind of kicked us in the face a couple of times. It knocked our masks off. Oh no. So we really got the full taste of salt water. <laughs> so that was <laughs> experience. <laughs> Can I ask one more question? Yep. Why did you decide why did each of you decide to go? Like what was the draw for you? Uh so the reason I wanted to go is Mr. Schmidt said it once. Uh the coral reefs are depleting so much now that you wanna be able to see it. Cause eventually it is gonna be gone and it is something that like the sights of the world that you want to see. It's definitely worth it. I mean, I could say pretty much the same thing. I really wanted to see this because I know at some point it, it's one of those things that might not be around in 50, 60 years from now. Um, I actually didn't think I was going to be, I didn't originally plan on going to this trip because I didn't have the uh, finances to make it. But thankfully, Mr. Schmidt presented me with the opportunity to get a scholarship, which I was very grateful for. I was able to come up with the rest of the money and attend the trip. Got to say that I was really glad to be able to make it. It was a really fun time. Jeff, you teach this class every summer, correct? And Hopefully, for at least 10 to 12 more years, yes. Yep. And <laughs> how many students generally go each time? Um, I think the smallest we had was, it, since I took the class over from Mr. Ristigan, um, the smallest I've had was eight students, and then uh, a couple years ago we had 18, which is two full bolts. We could actually make it larger than that, but we really don't want to. Um, that's a good size for um, th the the bonding that ha happens when you're down there. Um, even with like these uh, nine students, we're able to bond together and get along and have really good time. At least from my point of view, looked like they were having a good time together. So I think if I got bigger than 18, I might lose some of that. You haven't had to turn any student away, have you? Uh, no, not since I've taken over the trip. That's great. Good. Thanks. Uh, 
we've uh, had a eighth grader has gone in the past or someone who is going to be a freshman has gone in the past uh, but mainly yes it's ones are going to be sophomore through senior and we've actually had a couple of people who graduated like yeah so those we had one person who graduated this year and then she went on the trip mm -hmm. And then how many credits do they get for the trip? Uh, half a credit. Half a credit for yeah, the so classroom and the, mm -hmm, awesome. Mm -hmm. So are there other chaperones or the place that you go, is there faculty there that assist you with? Because I mean, uh, so the control over nine people for one person wouldn't. Uh, this year I was the only chaperone because they take uh, nine people, nine students is their max and then one chaperone goes free well, uh, as part of the deal um, and so this year I was the only Miss um, Rada often goes on the trip especially when we get to that 18 and then they have faculty there lots of them now yeah. I know it's a, a, a very good learning experience my kids uh, went with Mr. Ristikin and they couldn't say enough good about it which is really really cool thing Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Schmidt. You. Thank you, students. That's awesome. Okay. Next on the agenda, public comment from citizens. Any? Nope. Okay. Next, communications. Okay, thank you. We will definitely read that. Okay. Um, financial statements, bills to be paid for June 2022 in the amount of one million one hundred thirty-nine thousand eight hundred eighty-nine and eighty-three cents. Any discussion or questions about the bills for June? All right. Okay, then could I get a motion to pay the bills for June? Was there, before we do, is there a typo yeah. in here? A typo on yeah, the? Yeah, the total on the list. It's different than. Okay, let's take a look at that. 1,139, Okay, let's take a look. The number, the number on the agenda is like 1.1, 1 .1, and the number, the total on your list is 1.9 something. So the correct number should be one million nine hundred and thirty eight thousand seven hundred and eight dollars even. Thanks for catching that time. And I'll make a motion to approve the June Okay. Bills. The June amended I'll second amendment. the motion to pay the bills for June. Okay. All in favor to pay the Bills for June, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion carried. Oh, perfect. Next is a financial statements for May 2022. Any discussion, questions? Okay, then we need a motion for the financial statements for May of 2022 to approve that. I'll make a motion to approve those statements. Second. Okay, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Motion carried. Nicole's thumbs up, okay. Very good. Next we have board committee reports. Facilities and technology. Next meeting will be coming up this summer. Yeah, I'm wondering if we could um, 
um, if we can schedule that meeting. Okay. Um, we have been working with uh, Bray on kind of the, the being able to publicize. Um, and then Sheila and I have been working on a PowerPoint um, for the for when we go to the the different presentations and I would just like we'd like input into that um, and so wondering if we might be able to do something in early August okay the people are on their committee do you want them to give you dates do you want me to just send out a couple dates to so that's Randy and Zach and mm -hmm. Nicole And Gary, no. Okay, we'll put we'll send out a couple uh, different dates, and then we can. And we do have a upcoming. Um, uh, Nicole's a part of that. We have uh, an upcoming meeting with communications with Bray, uh, Nicole, Mary Kay, Adam, and me on July fourteenth at two p.m. Very good. Anything else from this facility and technology? Okay. No. Negotiations meeting. The last meeting was June twentieth. Who has the report on that? Oh, twenty ninth. Yes. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Okay. Do you have any information we want to share about that meeting? Uh, you will be <clears throat> actually discussing that on 7B. Okay. So we had we had a meeting on June 20th and then again on the 29th with our board negotiations team and the TREA, the Two Rivers Educational Association team. Uh, Jeff is the president of that. Um, we went through a kind of a more formal negotiation process and so we will be coming forward uh, in 7b to ask for a 3.5 percent pay increase per cell for this next school year okay. very good thank you policy committee so our next meeting will be after the updates from neola Any other old business to discuss? No. Okay. New business. Approval of academic state standards. And Sheila put that in our board docs. Um, yep, and as I put in your, your board docs every year, um, it's required that the board approve academic standards and which standards we're, we're doing. The district has adopted the state academic standards. Um, they're a couple hundred pages long, so we didn't run them for you. Mm -hmm. um, you. So you can go <clears throat> right under that website and see them. We also did add to your board docs. Um, the high school has put together a really nice um, syllabi catalog of every class. It talks about what the class is about, and it lists every standard uh, that the kids are, that they will be working on during that quarter or that semester. Our goal would be to get um, a document like out there that like that out there for the middle school as well as the the elementary schools. Great. That's next steps. That's wonderful. So then we need approval of the academic state standards. Is there any discussion? Just for education purposes, um, what are your options for the states or the standards? Districts can write their own standards. Um, I don't know in the in the fifty states how many districts do that. You know, for the most part, they follow the state academic standards in each state. Um, there are national standards as well, um, so I I couldn't tell you how many don't follow them. My guess is very, very few. Is this what we've always done? Follow, yes. Follow them? Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that rain? 
We didn't beat the storm, whoever no. suggested that. <laughs> okay. So then um, we will need a motion to approve the academic state standards that Two Rivers will be following. I'll make that motion to approve the state academic standards. I'll second. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Got it, Nicole. Nicole is a thumbs up. Good, good. Next, we would like to approve the teacher contracts with a 3.5% pay increase per cell for the 2022-23 school year. <coughs> so as stated, we, um, we, we met with um, the TREA. It was more of a negotiation this year, and the reason that is is a, a, if, if a school has an active union, they're able to uh, negotiate up to the base, uh, CPI base wage. So this year that was 4.7. So it would have been a 4.7 on a base wage. So when TRE came forward, they, they asked for that 4.7. The board had originally offered a, a 3.25. Um, they also brought forward some meet and confer items, um, which could not be a part of the negotiation. It was just a discussion about meetings, about <coughs> start time, about um, this, uh, I think I listed them, maybe I didn't. I think I sent them to in an email. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, so then we met again on the, the 29th, and then at that time, um, it was agreed upon to do that 3.5 per cell increase. Um, TREA had to go to their their group and have it ratified and then we have to bring our negotiation team has to bring it to you to approve mm -hmm. did you want to add anything Jeff no. okay. is there a firm deadline for approval Nope, if, you, if we didn't approve, if we were to go back and forth and back and forth, it would just, um, it, and there ended up being an increase, it would just be delayed. So the, the business office then would be, you know, writing a, a back, you know, going back. The goal would be not to be doing this so late. The goal would be to have this done in April, May-ish. Um, the challenge this year was uh, insurance. And so with that insurance and looking at that 60% increase, we did not feel comfortable moving anything forward until that was taken care of. Mm -hmm. So hopefully next year, we won't have any surprises on insurance and we can take care of this earlier next year. Any other discussion? Okay. I just wanna make a comment and thank Jeff and his other teacher staff that were there involved in the great relationship during the meetings and working together and getting something figured out because we all know that there's some issues coming up this school year but I thought the meetings went very well and seen the some of the emotions from the staff too heartfelt from you guys and it means a lot so when do these raises go into effect so it would be for this, this school year. So for, for if you approve the, the year round, it would be July 1st. Yeah, so the contractual school year. Okay. Good. Any other discussion about that? And I think just one other point. Um, Randy, Tim, and Zach were a part of those. That they were part of the negotiations team. So thank you to the three of them for, for working through it and attending meetings. Thank you. Okay. We need a motion to approve the increase for the teacher's contract. I'll make the motion to improve the 3.5% increase per cell for the new teacher's contracts. Second. All in favor? Oh, I'm sorry, roll call. Okay, roll call please. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mrs. Benteen? Thumbs up. Okay, Mrs. Veldre? Yes. Mrs. Henriksen? Yes. Mr. Klinkner? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Shavlik? Yes. Okay. 
Okay, next we need to approve the support staff, oh, excuse me, um, approve the administrator contracts with the 3.5 pay increase effective July 1st, 2022. Yep. So you um, so typically uh, the board will if a if a, whatever is approved for the teacher contract is approved for the rest of the group. So you have the administrators, the para team, the kitchen staff, the secretaries, and who am I missing? Custodian. Did I say custodian? No. Oh, sorry, Adam. <laughs> Adam's giving me the look back there. <laughs> so we would be asking that um, that same point, that same 3.5 is approved for administrators and then right underneath their support staff um, covers those, the other four groups. Motion. I'll make the motion to approve the 3.5% for administrator contracts and support staff. I'll second the motion. We should probably do just um, just one at a time. Okay. okay. And then you'll have to do the roll call. Okay. Okay, I amend my motion to approve the 3.5% for administrator contracts. Okay. We need I'll second. second that. Okay. Roll call. Okay. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mrs. Benteen? Yes. Mrs. Veldre? Yes. Mrs. Hendrickson? Yes. Mr. Klinkner? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Shavlik? Yes. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Next, we need to approve the support staff overall 3.5 wage increase effective July 1st, 2022. So I'll make that motion to approve 3.5% for support staff. Again, I'll second that motion. Um, roll call? Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mrs. Benteen? Thumbs up. Mrs. Veldre? Yes. Mrs. Hendrickson? Yes. Mr. Klinkner? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Shavlik? Yes. Next on the agenda is approve the open enrollment students for 2022-23 school year. So each year, um, this is also brought forward to you, <clears throat> and you can see in your um, notes that we kind of broke it down for you. Um, I think just a big thank you goes out to Angie and Jolene and all they do for our charter school. You'll see that we have a lot of students that want to come into the district, and that's in part because of the great job that Jolene and Angie do. As you can see, we have um, in open enrollment in, we have 57 students asking to come in. In alternative open enrollment, which is an enrollment that opens July 1st. So after July 1st, people can also ask to come into a district. It used to be different. It used to be only from February to April you could ask to come in. Mm -hmm. And if you missed it, you missed it. You didn't get to make that choice. The state opened that up. So we have 17 more. And then um, of there were eight students who showed or families that showed interest but haven't responded to a letter yet. So Sheila and I were talking about making some phone calls to see if what those eight were choosing to do. We also decided, and this doesn't have to be approved, but we decided to just show you open enrollment out. So we have 11 students um, asking to go out, but of those 11 uh, or of and additionally eight others but they have not responded to open enrollment out yet so a total of 19 but eight haven't decided yet and then we have the 74 that want to come in plus a possibly another eight which is awesome mm -hmm. So we need to approve the open enrollment students for 2022. I'll make a motion to approve the open enrollment students for 2022. Okay. Um, just a question on that first. Do we have a limit? I forget. The only, the only seats we close are students with special needs. Um, besides that, if there, there are no special needs, we don't close the seats. And you can see on that list that a lot of them are Lighthouse, which really doesn't 
uh, always it, it's easier to accommodate than sometimes classrooms are. Um, I did tell Angie and Jolene, and, and you could see it on your notes, um, we do have Andy Myers going to the charter to help support uh, students with IEPs. So some of the kids who are coming in, or, or excuse me, not coming in, who are part of our charter school have student, are students with disabilities. Mm -hmm. So Andy is going to support uh, those kids, and I have talked to Angie and Jolene actually today and just said if you're finding that you're getting very swamped, you got to come and talk to us uh, because I think that the program growing by 50, 60, 70, 80 kids in one year is just astronomical. So they might need support and they said, yes, we'll come to you if, if, we, if we're needing some extra support. You'll also see that one of the things we did was um, we, we signed a contract with the Wisconsin Virtual Schools so if we have a high school student who uh, is a virtual student and he needs science, English, math, whatever, history, in the past, Angie and Jolene have been trying to support all of those kids in all of those subjects, and there's no way they can do that. So if we have kids who need that and Angie and Jolene don't have the, the skills to do that, they will, they'll take credits through WVS and be supported, uh, they offer a teacher per subject. So if I take a science class through WVS, there's a teacher there, virtually, who can help support me. Um, and that teacher specializes in biology or algebra or whatever it might be. So just to try to give our students some better options um, and more support not all kids will need that by any means. Some will, um, a lot won't. But we wanted to have another option. If we're gonna grow our charter school, we need to grow the support of that charter school. Mm -hmm. So I just have a question about the Wisconsin Virtual School. Do you pay as need per student? Yes, you pay for that class or you can buy, you can, they call it a bundle. So if we find we have 10 students who are gonna take uh, whatever, 10 credits or 12 credits, we can bundle it and pay a little bit less that way. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? Okay. We need a motion to approve the open enrollment students for 2022-23 school year. I'll make the motion to approve or the uh, open enrollment students for this next school year, 22-23. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next we have discussion and approval of the board school visits calendar. So Sheila put together a, a beautiful calendar. She, she sent it to you on Google. Um, I think what you have to decide tonight are um, the who's representing which school and if it's staying uh, the way you kind of originally talked about. And then um, the approval of the calendar is more like she just put together the calendar in months. And so once you decide which school that you're going to represent or, or be a bigger part of, then we would ask those principals or assistant principals to be sending you more information about uh, okay, here are events that are going on, so you're aware of those events. And then if you're going to uh, want to attend, like Tim, you talked about, we're going to be at McGee from 7 to 8 one morning um, so that we can get it on the calendar and then publicize that for you. So right now she has, um, she's got it color-coded. Um, she has Maria at Koenig. Um, Randy and Zach at McGee, Gary at Clark, Tim and Nicole at the high school, and uh, Jen at the charter school. Is that what you would like to do for this school year? Assignments you would you want for this school year? just had a question about the two at McGee. I thought we were looking at two at Clark being more appropriate, but I might be remembering wrong. You know, I saw your email and I was trying to think back to our discussion, but. I thought you both said McGee. 
that right? Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. 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 Unless one of you want to volunteer for Clark with Mr. Shavlik. Love to you guys. I'll just look out. Take the key. You want to go Clark? We can do both. I mean, I can stay at both, I guess. So you want to try to rotate? Sure. You want to rotate? Okay. Okay. So then I'm thinking, Sheila, if um, schools will publicize and if you decide you want to be there for an event, if you want to be there for a listening session, they would contact, the board members would contact you, you would put it on the calendar, which they have access to. Yes. Does that sound mm -hmm. what you're thinking about? Sure. That, that wouldn't preclude us from, I, I could call Jolene and meet her. No. And talk with no. her. I mean, it doesn't have to be recorded on here if I no. do something. Okay. And we also, you know, I, I let principals know and also said that we were assigning tonight that you also work. Lots of you also work. So understand that if you can be there, you can be there. And if you can't, you can't. What do you mean by a, a listening session? Is there something set up ready, a, a certain day that's set up for, or just that something new that we would be doing a, a listening session where we would go there and listen to the staff or or parents or the, the, the kids or, okay. Okay, that that's what it is, sorry. Yeah, Gary, that's what I was thinking. I mean, come in and chat about whatever they would like to chat about. You want a motion to approve this calendar? I'll make that motion. A second. All in favor of the approval of the board visits calendar? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Oh, okay, super. Thank you for putting that together, Sheila. Information and discussion on draft refer referendum ballot language. It's in the agenda. The ballot itself? The actual language? Let's see. Questions. So we had a conversation with Allison Buchanan, who is from Quarles and Brady. We've worked with her in the past for prior financings. We work with her for our cash flow borrowing every year, and then the last time when we had a referendum, um, we worked with her for that as well. So we talked about um, making sure that the um, language that's in the ballot is, it, it's kind of a delicate balance. You wanna be specific, but yet not too specific so that um, if for some reason you have an opportunity to address something, you want to make sure you're always within the confines of the language that was written when the question was asked of the voters. Um, she had talked about having the language be presented tonight for um, just for your review and then having approval at the next board meeting in July, at the end of July. No problem, we'll look at it now. November 8th, 
I, we do. It was attached to our agenda. I don't have it in my Yeah. We are on the ball. That's what I'm like. Did I not save it? Yeah. As an attachment at the, on the um, so during the then the, during the April twenty fifth meeting you would see you would see two questions coming or two pieces of a resolution coming up to approve uh, the bonds and then to approve the thirty eight point seven. She wanted to show this to you to say, do you want to word it differently? Does the is the wording clear enough, but yet broad enough um, for uh, for the for the language that when you go to vote, when people go to vote, <coughs> this is the language they would see. Did you say April or yeah. November? Like July. Yeah. You're what? You want July. to say July? Okay, I thought you mentioned something about April. <laughs> oh, we're on the wall here. It's July I thought so. <laughs> That's not. So during the July 25th meeting, you would approve the question and the bond and the amount. And then what we, we would do is, when we do the presentations, the community presentations, we would have that language on one of our slides so people can see what the language looks like. Because when you go into vote, you see 38.7, you don't know what that kind of impact means to you. Well, that means $49 to you, but that's not what it says. A question can't say it, a question gives the full amount. So we want to be clear with, with um, with the community about what does that actually mean? I think we talked about this, but should suggestions come up about changing that language, how long do we have to make the change? When's the last time we can? August. Mm -hmm. And then we'd get probably some, a lot of information put into the Raider Reporter also as much yep. as we can yep so we put that clear. two page yeah, in there <clears throat> we'll have a rate of reporter that goes out in september which will be awesome um, that'll be really good timing and we'll put all of that information in there we'd probably also send out um, maybe just a either a trifold or a just a a big postcard saying this is the impact to you so that when people vote they know what they're voting for And that's one of the things we're going to work on Thursday about what, what do we want, how do we inform the community, how do we stay very transparent and show them what, you know, all these pieces. So this was just for information. We, we, we figured you might want to see it before, mm -hmm. have time to think about it. If you see something on that question and you're like, that's not very clear, the community will be confused. Just you got to let us know so then we can have it ready for um, the next, for the July 25th meeting. Okay. I'm disconnect them. Very helpful. So we can review it and then make any suggestions for next meeting. Yeah, so if you could Super. do that before the next meeting and send me anything okay. um, so that we have it ready then for that meeting. And if we have to ask Allison anything that she's, that she can give us information on what, what can and be can't be put on there. Because it is very, as you can see, very legal. Mm -hmm. It is logistic, but it's still understandable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good, thank you. Anything else on our new business? No. Okay. 
All right, next we're ready for administrator updates. All right, so I'm gonna pull up, kind of jostling between uh, Zoom and this. So you'll see um, in your board docs that we, <clears throat> a team of us were able to meet together to put together some pool protocol. And we also ran this by Lori, our attorney. So Tim and Brian, Adam, Jamie Rohr, Max and Matt, teachers and me met on June 28th to talk about, um, so what are the expectations? We're gonna be filling the pool, which um, Adam did this last week. We have somebody from the, the county coming uh, next Monday to, to make sure everything's working the way it's supposed to be working. But before we have anybody step foot in there, what are our expectations? So you can see that um, in, in talking it through and talking to Lori as well, that um, protocol will change a bit. We'd be asking that a lifeguard who could be a student or an adult, along with another adult um, that could either, either be the coach, um, someone giving instruction, or just somebody simply there to monitor, strictly monitor the pool area, must be present at all times. You'll see all doors are locked, which is, is what the rule is anyway, um, until those two people are in place and ready. You can see that um, once everyone clears the pool area, the lifeguard, instead of just sweeping, is going to take a uh, sweeping, meaning you know looking, is going to take a lap around the pool. And then you can see that um, once it's cleared, all doors are locked um, going into that pool area. We also added on there some pool protocol. You'll see that um, we are, will be putting a walkie-talkie in that area, probably be mounting it to the wall. Um, you can see that Jamie uh, is checking with um, the, the Hardarama group to see if we could get an AED that's placed right in the pool area. So right now it's right outside the pool area, but we would like to have one in there. Um, in the pool area and have that installed and Adam and his team would be doing that. We're also, and we didn't put it on this list, but we're also looking at um, maybe some additional lighting for the pool. And then you can see um, Jamie Rohr was a part of it, talking about students with medical needs. So um, when, when, if a student, if your child has medical needs, those are listed in Skyward and it gives a special little icon that shows that the student might have a medical need. Now that's, that's really good if the parent tells you what the medical need is. If they don't tell you and we don't know about it, obviously there's no alert. So before, uh, before the, a swim class would, would be in there, we would be asking the, the, prin the principal, the, the teacher to send home um, a letter that says, if the, hey, we're gonna start the swim unit. If your child has any uh, medical needs, you have to make sure you let us know. Uh, the same for when we start um, swim clubs. And then the, the teacher or the coach would consult with our nursing team, with Jamie, if uh, a medical need was reported. And then the parents obviously would have the right if they feel that the student shouldn't be swimming, they'd have a right to opt the student out. Or if we know there's a medical need, we would be sure to have uh, someone with that student if that student needed to be more one-on-one. -on -one. We'd have an adult and um, be able to accommodate the needs of that student. And then you can see that Sheila um, also typed up for us some posters um, that will go into, uh, she's working with uh, Patty to have those posters in the swim uh, in the swim pool area, um, written on some big, you know, big paper, so that the protocol is very uh, visible to all. Might I suggest with the poster if we could do some visuals, like uh, a lifeguard? Um, just I think it draws people's attention to it better with a picture Good instead idea. of so many words. Mm -hmm. I have a question on uh, the walkie-talkies um, for emergency use. Who will be monitoring uh, if somebody would need it? 
would be monitoring. You mean like so the batteries and who's on the no, who's, who's who's oh that that would be no that would be so they could call out so you didn't have to go to a phone. Um, there's a lot of people who have walkie-talkies in in the building. So Brian always carries one. Tim always carries one. I have mine on in the office at all times. Custodial team has theirs on. So instead of having to go to a phone to say, please call 911, they would just grab the walkie-talkie. And now you have probably seven sets of ears hearing, we need help. So but just a quicker response. Be at least one person because if you're gone and Tim's gone and Yep. Brian, secretary. Somebody always be yep. monitoring, though. No. Yep. Okay. If I'm gone, mine is on, so Sheila can hear it. I have a suggestion, too, to get the AED order. And then, you know, our unit part of Rama wants to donate money towards it to cover that. I just had to order one for our church, and there's a lot of companies right now that did not get them for a long time. Um, uh, okay. The company we deal with for the fire department, she actually sent me to another company who was not a competitor, but somebody they deal with. And the one, I think they had 25 of them come in and some large company in the United States bought them all. And they had another brand that was coming in and they had 125 of them and I was lucky to get one of them. So my suggestion is just, I've got contacts if you need them. Yeah, let's, order, we'd like that. Just so we can get it. Jamie had done some, <coughs> She had done. She had looked at three different companies. So if you could send us where you got it, that would be helpful. Anything else on um, pool protocol? No, I just want to say thanks to the group who sat and talked about it and put it together with safety in mind. I appreciate it. Yeah, and just you know, just for for your information, like these aren't things that would have to be done. Like we did everything that we had to do. Like we were meeting the, the what we were supposed to do, we just decided that we wanted it stricter than what we have to do mm -hmm. because of because of our loss. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you. Um, Spain trip. Um, so right now uh, we have a group of of students um, with Janessa Novitsky and uh, Christine Mulkanovic. Um, on a trip to Spain and I did put a, a little message in your, your your board bulletin about um, kind of where they're going what they're seeing um, we get updates a couple times a day we belong to the um, we were invited to be a part of the Spain group so we get to see the pictures of them in Barcelona they were there they were leaving Barcelona now and I think moving on to Granada um, and it looks like they're having a great time. The weather looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I just asked Barb if she would maybe post a few of those. Um, Barb Jandron's also on that Spain group. If we could post some of those pictures on, on our Facebook page so that, that other people could see them. Rather warm over there right now, isn't it? In the up 90s, I think. I, I, they said it was going to be very warm, um, but it's... In looking at the pictures, I'm like, oh my gosh, they have such a nice, you know, it's just beautiful. It's like cloudless and they haven't complained about ex extreme heat, so <laughs> they must be okay. Um, and then I just, you know, I just want to say thank you, um, Mary Kay, Deb, Niachu, and Lana. We have our audit going on right now. And, um, if you if you don't know this, um, preparing for an audit takes an exceptional amount of time. These ladies were in over um, the, on the Fourth of July. They were here the weekend before the Fourth of July, and um, they worked their tails off. And so I just want to say thank you to our business manager group for all the hard work and dedication. And I really hope that once the audit's done they can take some time off because it will be well-deserved time. Thank you. Good job. And that's all. Okay, very good. Kyle, did you have anything that you wanted to just say? Okay. okay. Have We're you started now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great, welcome. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Heard you've been putting in a lot of time prior. 
It's appreciated. I just get to know everybody and walk around and kind of get uh, faces to names. Uh, you know, Diane and he and I have been working with together professional development that our new teachers will go through when they get here in August. And, you know, that those PD days that happen in August too. Uh, Tim Wester and I worked for about four hours this morning developing um, lessons around what it looks like to have a gradual release responsibility classroom. Thank you, Mr. Karnick. We have our new teachers meeting for four days before school starts. And so it, it was two days, and we just felt like we had so much for them. And um, so we made it four days to give them also m more time with their mentors in the classroom. You know, the goal would be um, when they walk out of those four days, they know what the first two weeks of school looks like as far as curriculum goes. They know what they're going to do. They feel comfortable in what they're going to do. Um, and, of course, um, then pre pre uh, preparing them for, for the student interaction piece of it, the relationships and the, the classroom management and um, making sure they have some information on Alice training, but we'll share all of that with you probably at the July 25th meeting or the August meeting. We have a really nice draft put together, um, and then we have the three days with all staff, and we're working on those agendas as well. So the administrators and, and Kyle and Bridget, we're meeting on uh, Ju July 19th and July 20th to, to keep working and moving forward with uh, with what this year will look like, we want to have all, we want to have everything planned for the whole year, this summer. So, it's good to have goals. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's true. Very ambitious. Thank you. Okay, anything else? Okay. So our upcoming events, July 13th and 14th, restorative practices, 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. at Two Rivers High School, um, MLLMC, um, and the board is invited to that. July 25th, 2022, Committee of the Whole Board meeting at 5.45 here at Two Rivers High School in room 218. August 8th, 2022, regular board meeting, 5.45 here in room 218. August 22nd, 2022, Committee of the Whole Board meeting at 545 here in this room. Okay. Can I have a motion for adjournment? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor to adjourn? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Motion carried. Meeting